Greetings all on this glorious Wednesday morning as we gather to reflect on God's Word and listen for His still small voice speaking to us. We continue our journey through this season of Lent. And this morning again we are in John's Gospel, chapter 8, and reading verses 31 and 32 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we come this day eager to hear from you, eager to learn from you, eager to rest in you. And so, God, as we meditate on your word, Lord, would you plant it deeply within our hearts? Would you speak a word of encouragement to us for this day? Lord, may everything we say and do be for your glory and lift high the name of Jesus, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This these verses follow on the on the heels of what we looked at yesterday. Jesus um, challenging the religious leaders who had brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And Jesus is continuing to encourage the people to follow him. To believe that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the one who indeed sets us free. And it centers on the word. Our relationship with God centers on the word. Indeed, the Bible is our foundation for our faith. Excuse me. Allergy season has begun. Oh, yay. <laughs> so Jesus says to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to the word of God. You are truly my disciples if you remain, if you keep your eyes fixed on me, if you remain faithful in following me, walking with me, serving with me, humbling yourself before me. That's the 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 mark of a disciple. Is one who has committed one's life to following Jesus, to living according to his message of grace, of forgiveness, of love. To remain committed to following the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the living Word of God. And notice here that, that Jesus isn't demanding perfection, he isn't demanding that, that we memorize the Bible from, from Genesis 1-1 through to Revelation 22. He's not requiring us to do anything but to remain faithful, to remain committed to his teachings, to the word of God, to growing deeper and deeper in our relationship with him. Of course, this is uh, the, the foundation of the Wesleyan uh, tradition. John believed in the, in the truth that we, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives and, and surrender ourselves to him, we are born again. It is that moment of justification by faith. But then the transformation begins. 
And Wesley used the word sanctification as the as the term to describe that that process of of growing deeper and deeper in our relationship with Christ, growing more and more like Jesus every day. And we never reach perfection, not this side of glory. But we become we we strive to to remain faithful to the teachings of Jesus. We we strive to to grow deeper in our relationship with him. We strive to be more and more like him each and every day. And of course it is has prompted many books to be written on the on the on the idea of being more and more like Jesus. You know, one of the one of the great um books that was written is in his steps and and the more contemporary version written by sheldon's grandson what would jesus do which 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 spawned the that what would jesus that wwjd movement that, that that was prevalent in the christian community in the in the 90s and probably still to a certain ex extent today but it's that notion that we are to be more and more like Christ each and every day. And so this is what Jesus desires of us. He desires for us to remain faithful to his teachings. And when we do, he says, you will know the truth. You see, when we remain faithful to the teaching of Jesus, excuse me a second. The sun came out. <laughs> when we remain, remain faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we know the truth. The truth abides in us because Christ abides in us. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, no one will come to the Father except through him. Truth is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. And I, I always marvel at that, that moment, that, that pause in the story of Jesus' death and resurrection where Jesus is alone with Pilate. And Pilate says, What is truth? And we read that and we say, Jesus is the truth. The truth will always come out, friends. The truth, Jesus says, will set us free. And that's what we experience when we have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. When we remain faithful to his teachings. We experience the truth that sets us free. That we no longer have to live in the, in the lie that Satan has, has held us in. The lie that, that this is as good as it, as it gets. There's nothing any better waiting for us. Or the lie that says that, that God could never forgive you for what you've done. He may have forgiven other people. But your sins are far greater than any of the ones that he forgave, and he could never forgive you of yours. And Jesus says, remain in the truth. The truth is the truth of God's word. That God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
that the Son came not to condemn the world of the sins, but to save the world from their sins. That God did not spare even his one and only Son in order that we might be set free. And nothing in all creation, no rulers, nor principalities, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God revealed to us in Jesus Christ. That's the truth, friends. That's the truth. And, and so when we remain in Christ, in the teachings of Christ, in the, in the truth of Christ, we're set free. We're set free. Set free from the bondage of sin, set free from the bondage of, of condemnation, set free from the bondage of lies and deceit that have been thrust upon us by Satan who is bent on drawing us away from Christ. The religious leaders didn't like Jesus because they couldn't stand the truth. They knew that he was the Messiah. They knew that he was God's one and only son. They knew that he was telling the truth and they couldn't stand it. And so the only way that they could deal with with it was to have him eliminated. But even with their murderous and deceitful act, they couldn't keep God silent. And of course, we know the good news of the gospel that on the third day, Jesus rose victorious from the grave after having been crucified on the cross, bearing the humiliation and the shame of the cross for you and for me so that we didn't have to bear that ourselves. And he took that to the grave. And he rose victorious on the third day, never to die again, and silenced the religious leaders. The truth will set you free. And so, friends, I encourage you this day to walk in the truth, to speak the truth, to do so in love, with kindness and compassion, but to speak the truth and experience being set free from the bondage of carrying lies and, and, and mistruths in your heart. Be cleansed from that and be set free. Only Jesus can do that for you. And so I pray that you will go to him today and ask to be set free from that bondage, those chains and experience true freedom in Christ and know his peace which passes all understanding. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day and we just are so grateful that you do not abandon or forsake us but that you seek us out each and every day and you desire for us to have an intimate relationship with you a relationship that is founded on the truth, founded on love and grace, compassion. Jesus, we thank you that you are willing to go to the cross for our sake, to bear our sin upon yourself so that we may be set free. For those who are free in Christ are free indeed. And we just rejoice and praise you for that gift. 
And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you come and meet us in the midst of life and you help us to walk in the truth, to speak the truth, to live the truth. And so we pray, O oh God, that you'll make your face shine before us this day, that you will lead us and uphold us with your love and your grace, and that you will direct our steps, that in all ways you'll be glorified through the words we speak and the things we do. Father, we ask this in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. So have a great day, friends, and we'll see you tomorrow. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow.